In this video, we will create various types of graphs using Excel. And there is another video as well that shows you how to perform the same steps in StatCrunch. One software may be better than another at performing specific functions, and we'll talk about what those are. So if we're starting in StatCrunch and we have our data, we want to take this to Excel. What we can do is select Edit. Now, if you're working on a Mac, the steps may be a little different because your shortcuts may be opposite. But we want to select all of our data and our shortcut is pressing Control and A at the same time. And next what we want to do is to copy the data. So the shortcut with a PC is Control C. When we get to Excel, Control V is going to be our paste function that we can use. So you have to press Control and C and then we start in Excel, we press Control and V. So now that we have our data, we want to create our frequency and relative frequency distribution. So the easiest way to do that in Excel is by using something called a pivot table. So if we select the insert tab and the pivot table icon, we already had our data highlighted, so that's our select our data table or range. And you have the option as to where we're going to place this. You can place it on a new worksheet, but I would prefer to have it right beside our data set. So select existing worksheet, click inside of the location box, and then you just select a cell where you want your results to show. So we press OK. Now under rows, what we want horizontally are the options for our color TVs. So these are all of the options. Our lowest option is a home has no TVs. Our highest option is the home has five TVs. And now what we wanted to do is to count for us how many values we have. So we can drag and drop the option of color TVs. And we do not want some here. What we would like, we're gonna click the arrow, select value field settings, I just want the count of each of these options. So this is our frequency distribution. It gives us the options for how many TVs are in each home, and then it gives us the corresponding frequency, the count for the number of homes that have that particular amount of TVs. So there's one home that doesn't own a TV at all. There are 14 homes that have one TV, 14 homes that have two TVs, eight homes that have three TVs, two homes that have four TVs, one home that has five TVs. Now to create our relative frequency distribution, we're gonna select color TVs again and drag that once again down to values, but we do not want the sum here, we want the relative frequency. So we select the arrow again, value field settings, and this time we want to show our value. Well, first we want to select count and then show our value as a percent of the grand total. So the way we find relative frequencies, we take our count, we divide it by the grand total, how many options there are available, and we can multiply it by 100%. So 2.5% of the own homes do not own a TV, 35% of the homes own one TV. So first two columns represents our frequency distribution. The first column and the third column gives us our relative frequency distribution. Dot plots are not available as an option in Excel. So this is one case where StatCrunch would be a better option in order to create that. Now to create our histogram, we have to have an add-in already established. So the way we select add-ins, we go to File, we go down to Options, we select Add-ins, and we want to click on at the very bottom, Manage Add-ins, and press Go. So now what you need to do is to make sure to click on your Analysis Tool Pack, make sure there's a check marks in the box. You don't necessarily need the second one. And then press OK. Now, when we go on the Data tab, you will have another group called Analysis with Data Analysis there. 
So we're going to select data analysis and these are additional tools that you can use for our class. We will be using descriptive statistics, correlation, histograms, regression, sampling, and then our tests as well. So for right now, what we want is histogram. Our input range, you want to make sure that your variable is not highlighted, the title. So for our pivot table, you did want to make sure that the title was in there. But for your histogram, under your input range, you do not want the name of the title. Your bin range, I'm going to show you in a second what that does, but we can take it out for now. You can once again tell where you want your output to go. I want my output in, instead of H19, I like to see it here. And you want to make sure to select chart output at the very bottom and click OK. So this is initially what Excel gives us. With charts, you want to make sure you have a title. You can change this bin range to number of color TVs. We have our frequency on the vertical axis. You can change the size of your graph, but you should see one or a couple of issues. One of our first issues is our data is discrete, and whenever you have histograms, the bars are supposed to touch, and they're not touching. So the way we do that, you select a bar, and you know your bars are selected because you have the dots around them. And the option that you want available is gap width. So sometimes you can click on that filter tool like I did and it will come up. Sometimes you may have to select on just one bar and then right click in order for a format data point to come up. But we want our gap width to be zero. This is how you make the bars touch. So Excel is a better option to create histograms when your data is discrete. Because in the stack crunch video, we showed that the title does not center on the data as our textbook states. Also, you can change this more in this table to be five as well to match. So that's your histogram for your discrete data. Let's see what our histogram looks like if we want a relative histogram. So relative histogram, we would have to use the percentages in order to create it as well. So let's go to our next data set. The second problem was problem number 40. And once again, and we want to select all of our data here. We want to copy by pressing, pressing control C. In Excel, we want to press with control V. So it's not as easy to create a frequency or relative frequency distribution when your data, we're going to group it, when we're going to have classes and rows. So we're going to go just to the histogram. So we go to our data tab. We go all the way to the right for data analysis. Histogram is a better option. Well, the option that we want. And our input range, remember, do not include the title. Then range, we're going to leave blank for now. We'll come back and show what that looks like. Output range, where do we want our data to show? I want to put it here. Make sure chart output is selected and OK. So if you don't indicate a bin range, Excel picks its own range of numbers, how it wants to lay the data out or separate the groups. And once again, you always want to make sure you have a chart title. You want to make sure your axis titles are correct. We talked about that we want our bars to actually touch. So we change the gap width. And you see that we also have another issue. This data is grouped and the number is directly in the center. And that's not exactly the way our book states it. What we really want is the numbers on the edges as well. So 
there is an option that you can slide the numbers over, but your histogram changes. So this is another case where stat crunch would be a better option for creating your histograms. So Excel is the better option for discrete data when creating histograms. Stat crunch is the better option for continuous data or group data when you're making histograms. And Excel does not create stem and leaf plots for data.